It's the Morning Sports Report here on Trib Live Radio. Ken Laird, Guy Junker, and Steelers reporter, yes, Steelers reporter, Chris Buzzsaw Adamski. Talking Kevin Colbert, the Penguin, the Penguins, the Steelers general manager. I'm all confused. The Steelers GM speaks yesterday, guys, and uh, I suppose the news that uh, is the biggest is Ben Roethlisberger's contract discussions have begun, finally. This thing creeps along. Uh, but you guys tell me, what was the biggest thing that Colbert had to say? Uh, guy, let's start with you. And I don't know. TV wasn't invited. <laughs> <laughs> you have to work in a new, at a newspaper to be able to talk to the poo buzz. I know. I know that's a little <laughs> a bit of a sore subject. Oh, yeah. uh, Regardless, as with the, over the wire, the uh, telegraph uh, lines were working. I, I think the quarterback situation is the biggest, Ken, although it's not earth-shattering news. I mean, you know, he said he wanted to get it done sooner rather than later when their season ended, and, you know, they wanted to too. But I think the, the, the what makes it interesting more than just from the, the team and quarterback situation to me is there's an opportunity here to save cap room. You know, give him what he wants, solidify that position for the remainder of his career, but also – Give yourself a little more spending room, depending on how they structure the contract, which they desperately need. Yeah, they're a bit under the cap, uh, Buzzsaw, but but this point, but you know they got to get compliant by March the tenth. So we'll see what kind of is there any urgency here to get it done before free agency, so they know what's in place. And do you think Ben would uh, at all take any kind of a discount when push comes to shove sure. to help them sign other free agents? Yeah, I, I, it's going to get done. What's you know, if it doesn't get done, that's really going to be a, that's going to be the major story. If for whatever reason things fall apart and it gets contentious or, or for whatever reason, but these things almost universally throughout the league, these these franchise quarterbacks, unless there's some underlying reason that the that you know a guy is overrated or, or something or a Jay Cutler or a friction between uh, in terms of personality, these franchise they don't go on the market. Have we ever seen? a truly uh, established uh, in good standing have coming off a good season veteran quarterback uh, you know in the top 10 in the league uh, go hit the market uh, the, you know the, the best of that might like literally might have to go back to Neil O'Donnell there's been guys that have been cut for various of course Peyton Manning was cut because of their situation and drafting Andrew Luck and there's been other guys on the market but this just generally gets done and there's never been any reason to believe that a, a Steelers and, and Roethlisberger uh, a negotiation was, was going to get contentious now whether it gets done before free agency I, I think I don't know if there's a super urgency. It has to be done by then, but I would think it is to the advantage of the Steelers to get it done by then. So you're right. You know what you're doing. You're lower Ben's cap number for this coming season. That should help. They're not as bad against the cap as they have been in the past couple off seasons, but they're still not exactly a flush with, with cash or open room available. Uh, the, the, you know, the bigger maybe news to me was you know no negotiations yet with, with Jason Worlds. Is that, again, it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. It doesn't mean... Uh, you know, we're still here in, in, in early February, so it's not you know an alarm yet. But I would think that that almost we've talked about that before. I think here that that almost has to get done because the Steelers don't have any other choice really. I, you know, if they if they lose Jason, World, you can debate whether Jason World is, is worth what he's going to get. You can debate whether this and that how much money. But I don't know where else they're going to go if yeah. they don't bring Jason World back. And you, you can't even say it's better than the alternative because there <laughs> right now is no alternative. Yeah, literally <laughs> on, the, on the roster, there's no alternative. And you know, if you're going to go out and get a free agent market, uh, you've already seen what drafting an outside linebacker even in the first round doesn't necessarily guarantee you anything so I don't know if they have any choice but to keep Jason Worlds around well they call Kevin Colbert called Worlds an ascending player guy he praised him but at the same time he basically said we'll see where the market goes which leads me to think they're not going to tag him and they may just let him test free agency and see where he is so if that's the case, that's a real gamble, uh, and they could be left, you know, holding the bag. And Arthur Motes would be, you know, a desperation move, or Howard Jones, one of their young guys. Well, I hope they're right about the ascending player part because if you'll recall Mike Tomlin's postseason press conference, the final one that he had, he, I think, all of our ears perked up a little bit. I mean, he had more praise for them than we expected him to, too. So are they uh, trying to blow a little bit of smoke here? Are they trying to build his confidence a little bit through the media? Or they they really see something uh, that we're not seeing on, on a play-in, play-out basis? Um, so I, I hope he is an ascending player, but um, the, the amount of money that it would cost to tag him, uh, to me, isn't worth it. But if that's what you have to do... It would be better to do that for one year than to give him a longer-term contract that really tie, ties up some money. And then if he doesn't work out, you know, you can still cut him. But, I mean, depending on, the you know, his uh, bonus money and everything, 
Uh, I'd rather have a short tether to him at the moment. You know, what's really yeah. interesting to me about this whole situation is that, and I, I certainly, I mean, Arthur Mitch was here in the, on the league minimum, veteran minimum this past season. Definitely, he's worth that, and, you know, he's worth even a little more than that. I could see the Steelers, no matter what happens with Jason Worlds, bringing him back, and maybe even double his salary from last yeah. year or whatever, and, and that, that's fine. I'm totally for that. The interesting dynamic is if you're Arthur Moat's agent and the Steelers don't re-sign Jason World and they do want to they approach him like, oh wait a minute, you want your start? This you're you're bring, you're coming to us as your starting outside linebacker. His value goes up, and he's the same player has the same value. But it's kind of funny how his role, if they do bring Worlds back, all of a sudden Arthur Moat's value goes down. If they don't bring Worlds back, you got to pay Arthur Moat's more. Mm. So it's kind of funny how that works. And you know, and there's also the market value. Who knows what another team saw out of Arthur Moat this past year? Maybe somebody wilds him and blows him out of the wall and doesn't give the Steelers a chance, maybe, who knows, you know, a lot of factors. But it's kind of interesting, that dynamic of it, too, that, that you know, an agent, rightly so, and he's every right to get the most for his clients, going to say, hey, you, this guy's a starter for you. We want this much rather than, you know, he's a backup. You got this much. Yeah, same with James Harrison, right? Yeah, if he, exactly. If he feels he's got another year left in the tank, he, I'm sure he will want to play for a little more money. Now that he proved he can still do it, um, you know, maybe they would uh, – not lie to these guys, but they, they gave Legarrette Blunt a uh, a convincing story, which he obviously felt they didn't follow through on this year, and uh, he has a backup, a pri- you know a pr- priority backup, and then just to re- you know back to the Ben contract guy, um, Aaron Rodgers sets the bar right now, twenty two mil a season. The, the, you can only spread ca- uh, guaranteed money out for five years these days, so. If they sign Ben now, he'll be thirty, you know, eight at the end of it, and he'll be. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be in that range, right? Twenty million per season, somewhere about there. Has you're to gonna, be. You're yeah. gonna throw him fifty million guaranteed, probably up front, but that's the, that's the price of uh, doing business. And they pushed it off this year, and he had his arguably best season ever. Uh, well, I don't, well, I mean. I guess it's arguable because when you end in a championship, I'll take the, I'll take a season that ends like right. it did in Super Bowl Forty, even though he wasn't very good against Seattle. Then one of which he puts up all these statistics. But one thing I, I do think is possible: what Kevin Colbert said yesterday, and I did read the paper, even though I didn't get to talk to him in person. <laughs> um, I, he did say that he thinks that his best years may still be ahead of him. I mean, a lot of guys. Most guys in football hit 32, their best years are behind them. And I think that is possible because I think he's a much smarter quarterback than he's ever been uh, and able to protect himself better than he's ever been. And I think he's got the best weapons to work with around him than he's had since he was very young and couldn't quite always take advantage of what he had back then. Right.